time to welcome in NFL draft prospect, former Houston Cougar, former Miami Hurricane, the quarterback himself, Mr. Derek King, is live in studio right now, getting set for the NFL draft. And Derek, we are grateful for your time, my friend. How are you? Doing good. Uh, thanks for having me. Excited to be here right now. Absolutely, man. We're fired up to have you as well. So, what is this? What has this whole process been like for you? Uh, th this whole draft process, getting ready physically, mentally, all the preparation. Is is it kind of what you expected it to be? Yeah, it's been good. You know, um, I've been thinking about this moment forever, right? So, like going through the pre-draft process, going to the combine, doing pro days, uh, pre-draft training. So, it, it's been good. It's been a lot of work. Um, I'm just super, super blessed to be in this position I am and have even have the opportunity to, to perform in front of NFL scouts and have the chance to go to the NFL. So, um, it's been good. Uh, is it uh, – what, what's more nerve-wracking, stepping onto the field for, for a, a collegiate game or working out in front of the all these scouts and everybody's just <laughs> watching you go through your drills? Uh, I, I would say probably a game. You know, I feel like I was so prepared for the combine and so prepared for, you know, I'm going to be prepared for my pro day that I think the games, you know, probably get a little more nervous or a little more butterflies. But um, I, I've been good. I've been prepared. So I've been feeling pretty good uh, doing my workouts. So what was the combine like for you? I mean, it <laughs> seems like the most stressful, longest job interview of all time. So what was the process like, the day-to-day -day routine? Who'd you speak with? I mean, what? How, how challenging was it really? And how relieving was it once you were done? Man, the combine is crazy. It's everything that I heard uh, from you know, my former teammates that have been through the process. Um, it's literally doing something every hour of the day. Uh, from the morning, you, the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep, like it's nonstop. You're talking to people, you're having meetings, you know, physicals, taking blood, doing MRIs, um, you know, doing everything, right? So uh, I was super relieved after after the combine was finished, um, had my workout. And it's kind of crazy because you get there, you know, three, four days before you got to work out. I think you do everything but football, right? As far, as far as like performing on the field, you have so many interviews, so many meetings, and there's a lot of the same questions. Like you talk to one team mm -hmm. and have your tape. You go over your tape, then another team asks you the same question. So you kind of like start repeating yourself like you know, 20, 30 times a get day. Get a little robotic almost. Yeah, get a little robotic. And it's like you kind of just, man, I'm ready to go, to go back to the room, go to sleep. But it, it was a blessing being there. The combine was a it was a good experience. So we've heard a lot of the combine is also the medical side of it. And you're, you were coming yeah. off an injury that unfortunately cut your season short. Yeah. How's the shoulder? How are you doing health-wise? Uh, my shoulder's doing good. Um, I, I feel like I'm, I'm fully back from it. Um, no, no complaints. It doesn't get tired. It doesn't hurt anymore. So I can go out there and throw a hundred balls if I need to. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to be, you know, being in this position right now. Uh, what was, uh, was there any challenging, ridiculous off the wall kind of questions? There's always <laughs> legendary stuff that comes out after the combine teams asking wild questions. Is there one that jumps out to you? If you were an animal, what animal would you pick? Oh yeah, <laughs> one. that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't really get any crazy questions. Um, I think this year they kind of put a rule on that. I'm not hundred oh, percent sure. They? But I heard people talking about they put a rule on the, they can't ask any crazy questions anymore. But um, I, I was I was lucky enough not to get any crazy questions. I know some of you know some guys I was at the combine with they had to do you know shoot basketball or you know do a staring contest or like things like that. It's just weird. So <laughs> staring, yeah, contest. staring contest, staring contest. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and see who blinks first. <laughs> That's I know how you Mike get to know the coach well. Yeah. You yeah. know, really look into their soul. Well, Mike Tomlin of the Steelers is always referencing like uh, cutting off their eyelids uh, after games. You know, Jeez. like you, you can't yeah. blink, you can't blink, that kind of thing. Uh, which is always a good time. It's De'Aaron King with us here in the Nosebleed Seats, NFL draft prospect, future NFL badass, and former Houston Cougar and Miami Hurricane. So how do you compare the two, the two cities, the two programs you have? Yeah. And they're both in the Sweet 16 right now, by the yeah. way. So where, where are your allegiances right now? If they met in, I don't even know if it's possible the way the bracket shakes Might be. out. They can, be, they can be in the Final Four. Yeah. But um, I'm going for both. You know, I, was, I, was, I watched both games on was that Sunday? Yes. I, think. I watched yeah. both games on Sunday. I was going for both teams. Um, I know a bunch of guys on both teams, so I'm, I'm rooting for everybody. And if, they, if they see each other, I don't know who I'm going to go for. I probably got to just stay out of it and, and, and whatever happens, happens. So you were, I mean, w when you transferred to Miami, you were one of the big names in the sport, and the NIL stuff becomes official. And you were one of the first athletes to sign an NIL deal. What was that process like? Yeah, um, you know, just playing in Miami, right? They love the Hurricanes in Miami. Um, so a lot of local companies, a lot of local business had a lot of interest in us players. And I was just lucky enough to be, you know, one of the, I guess, the the, the big name guys on the team, the starting quarterback for Miami. Um, so me and my guy Dusty, Dusty's my marketing marketing manager, and, you know, he pretty much laid everything out for me. Um, it was a easy plan to follow, and we had to decide which companies we wanted to work with. Um, and I think, you know, going through that process, we found some really good companies to work with, and it just, it just took off from, you know, July 1st to, to even now. What, uh, th th did you also share that with your teammates? 
Oh, was there something that I, I read a pretty cool story about how you went about sharing that? So it wasn't just you that got to benefit from the NIL deal, but your teammates as well. Yeah. So um, a, a couple companies sponsored a whole team. So all 90 scholarship players, uh, American top team. Um, oh, yes. Really big in the For US. MMA. Absolutely. Yeah, MMA, UFC people. Um, they sponsored a whole team, got everybody on the team, $6,000. Right. Um, you know, my big thing was, you know, trying to get as many guys as possible money, um, whether it's a thousand, two thousand, five thousand, 5,000, whatever I could do. And, you know, put them in front of people or just talk to companies for other guys. Um, I just want to help everybody out. It's Derek King with us here in the nosebleed seats. So uh, the, the process for you, it's, it's kind of interesting because you, you positionally, you did a little bit of wide receiver at Houston. Yep. Obviously, most of your time in college was spent at the quarterback position. So what have you, what's been the focus for you? Because that's one of the more interesting ones. I don't know if there's anybody else in the draft right now that has a similar story arc as you, where it's like, what position is he going to play? Is it going to be quarterback? Is it going to be wide receiver? So how do you like? How have you been preparing for? I guess both of those positions. Yeah. Um. So I'm I kind of been doing both. So fifty fifty, right? Um. I had the East West Shrine game. I played quarterback there and also did some receiver. Um. And I got invited to the combine as a quarterback. So I really focused on quarterback during the combine, but also ran routes. Uh, it wasn't on TV or anything, but I think I got them thrown on my group. Um. Had like a private session with you know probably you know ten to twelve coaches out there running me through drills and running routes and all that. So. I've been doing that. I've just been, been uh, preparing for anything. Um, at this point in my career, uh, I know I can, you know, I can play football, right? I can, I can walk your dog. If you need me to. So, like, whatever they need me to do, I'm, I'm willing to do. Um, so I've just been preparing for quarterback and receiver, um, special teams, anything that's like that, that that can give me the best opportunity to to prove that I can belong on a team. Then uh, I'll do it. So these teams that meet with you, are they are they super open about what they view you as? Some teams say, "Hey, we're looking at you as a quarterback." Some teams, "Hey, we're looking at you as a wide receiver." Or is it kind of a little bit vague, kind of looking at you at both positions? Yeah. So you know, teams I met with the combine, some teams were you know strictly looking at me at quarterback. Um, when I met with them, I, I met with the QB coach or OC, you know, going over tape at QB, talking about protections, talking about. You know, window off flip protection or coverages or like just different plays. Um, and then some teams are talking to me strictly the receiver. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of been mixed. Um, so I really don't know <laughs> at, that, at this point. That is so crazy. Yeah. Like on draft, everybody's fired up. Where am I going to go? <laughs> and you're going, where am I going to go? And what position am I going to play? Yeah, I know. It's I got I to be ready for anything. It's all up in the air. Now, when, when it comes to your meetings, you know, we, we heard that you met with the Cowboys. Yeah. What was that meeting like? It was good. You know, I met with Coach Nussmeyer. Um, He's a really good guy. He actually was, I think he was at Florida when I was coming out of high school. So we talked about that because, you know, they got Kyle Trask. Right. Um, and he just kind of met all the time and recruit down there. So we talked about that a little bit. Um, and we just went over tape. You know, we watched the Bama game. Um, he, he knows Coach Lashley real well. Okay. He's at SMU now. Talked about him with Coach Lashley. And we kind of just, just talked, you know, kind of caught up a little bit. So um, it, was, it was a good interview. Uh, I feel like it's a, it's a good relationship there. So you're a Texas kid. I mean, you grew up, played at Manville. Best state in the country. Powerhouse. Best, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you very much. <laughs> Best high school football in the country as well. No sure you had to fight for that down in Miami. They think Florida's got it. That's not, not the case here. Yeah. But uh, when it comes to your experience at Manville and how they've been able to pump a lot of guys now into the NFL, do you guys have a pretty close-knit relationship? Yeah, I think I don't know. all of us are still super, super close. I talked to Kyle um, three, four days ago. Um, so we all still talk, we communicate. I got my, my best friends. I went to high school at Melville, we'll talked to them every day. Um, met a lot of good people there. It was, it was really good. I was, it's crazy because my dad told me, because he kind of forced me to transfer there. I didn't want to go there. Oh, really? Yeah, he started, he, so he kind of forced me to transfer there, and I was going against the grain, and I want to go. And I'm looking back on it, that was the best thing that ever happened in my life, going to Melville and, you know, experiencing big time Texas football, um, 6A, and, you know, meeting my best friends for life, meeting a whole bunch of good people. So it's been good. When you talked with the Cowboys, was that kind of, uh, man, I'd, I'd like to really impress you. Did you grow up being a Cowboys fan, or is that kind of a dream of yours maybe to play with the star in your helmet one day? I used to love the Cowboys. I used to be a huge fan. You know, they had T.O. and the whole Romo connection. Um, you know, half my family's from Dallas. My dad's from Dallas. So I, just, I grew up a big Cowboys fan. Then, I don't know, some somewhere down the line, we kind of switched to the Texans. Um, Ooh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I, like, <laughs> I like both teams. Um, so I, I, I love Texas, and it'd be great to you know, be here. All right, what's your take on Bucky's? We were having a conversation. Yeah. I'm a big fan of the the Bucky's brisket sandwich. Thanks. I was getting you know uh, shamed a little bit on, on our truckwreck.com text line. Some okay. people are saying you don't know good brisket if you're a fan of that sandwich. Uh, now I'm not trying to say it's the greatest brisket sandwich in the world, but if I'm going to stop by Bucky's, I'm getting a barbecue sandwich. I mean, what's yeah. your take on this? 100. percent I agree with you. I think Bucky's is the best gas station slash grocery store slash clothing store whatever you need in the world. Right, so. 
Um, when I'm, when I'm, I, we just travel for track all the time. Like, stay track me in Austin. We always stopped at Bucky's and we always got a brisket sandwich. I'm not saying it's the best brisket in Texas, but it's it's pretty good for you know being kind of like a gas station sandwich. So. Derek King, my guy. facts right My there. guy, uh, it's Thank a beautiful you. thing. Yeah. Yes, it is. Derek King with us here live in studio. It's the nosebleed seats. And uh, so, what about in in terms of the difference of the programs that you were that you experienced, Houston and Miami? Uh, which which one was the bigger party school? Definitely Miami. Definitely Miami. No question. I mean, the city of Miami is wild. It's crazy. So um, I would say Miami. Thank God I was kind of in my later years, so I was kind of already over, you know. Been there, done that. Yeah. I was you just, got your party scene out of the way. I was just focused. So, but Miami, you can literally do anything you want out there. Now, did you have yourself a, a delicious Cuban sandwich when you were out there? So, I'm, I'm a very, very picky eater, right? So, I, I've definitely tried it. Um, I think so many people hyped it up to me that I had, like, such high expectations. So, when I tried it, it was like, ah, whatever. Okay. Oh, it, no. it, it, wasn't, it wasn't that bad. Is, is the pickle the problem for you? I hate I mean, pickles. Yeah. Uh, I hate pickles. Yeah, what about mustard? Do mustard? Do you a mustard guy? I hate mustard. Gosh. Ooh. I don't eat any, any condiments. Ketchup. Not even condiments. Nothing. Oh. Wow. So, you go to Whataburger and you say, hold the ketchup, please. I go to Whataburger, I get a number one or a number five, plain and dry with cheese. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. Are you are you a big eater? Are you someone that eats a lot, or are you nah, just kind of small small bites? I'm kind of only I don't eat a lot. You know, I'm a small small bites type of guy. So final yeah. final meal, what would you go with? <sighs> final meal. Don't you say a, a Bucky's brisket sandwich? Even though <laughs> nah. we both know it's delicious. I would nah. kind of love it if you did. Last meal, I probably I probably get a steak. I love steak. Okay. Yeah. Prime one twelve, huh? I love prime one twelve. I'm, I'm going to prime one twelve at the pro day that night. My, me and my mom, and brother, we going to prime one twelve. Yeah, is that the spot? Oh, that's yeah. the spot, I'm, man. That's... I know a lot of people that like work there and the owner and all that. So I love prime one twelve. Did anybody take you out to St. Elmo's when you were at the uh, combine in Indy? We went to St. Elmo's. Right? Yeah, yeah, we went to St. Elmo's. Did you get that shrimp cocktail? Was it? Did it live up to the hype? We got. It. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't even eat it because really? he's he's a picky eater. He's yeah. not gonna like cocktails. He's <laughs> <Yeah. So laughs> so like over there. Like, no, nah, give me the shrimp. Give me the shrimp. I no, Sean, that's good. I think Sean ate it. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, okay, so you're 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 a big uh, fashion guy as well, from yeah. from what I have read about you. How would you grade Walchuk? Stand up. No, uh, stand both up. of us. How would you grade our drips? I am wearing uh, well, I am he, wearing Crocs he right came now. Came from a day okay. job I'm where wearing Crocs I like right it. Now. He actually you know dressed well. I uh, I, like I have no style whatsoever. No, don't say you like it. I like it's all good. I mean, out of mm. ten, I probably you know. Come Might on. be off about seven. Hard seven. Yeah, okay. Bad. Okay. Bad. Seven's thinking, a passable grade. Yeah. We've all we've all done the seven thing. Here's the deal. When the Cowboys draft you, yeah. all right, and, and you're gonna come back on here with the nosebleed seats, <laughs> home of the Cowboys, I'm gonna need you to take me out shopping. We're gonna do a day Let's out on the it. town, Derek King and the nosebleed seats, Let's and I'm gonna that would be up my style. That'd be, all right, is this a date? <laughs> Yeah, yeah this it. it sounds like a date now. So, what is 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 the fashion thing something that uh, post NFL career that kind of thing that you'd you'd want to go feet first into kind of deal? Yeah, I mean, I feel like, um, you know, I think growing up, I always just like clothes, right? Um, and it, it's a difference, right? So, people talk about fashion. It's a you got you have, you know, fashion. You have uh, style. You have drip, and you have. Um, the stuff that people were in the industry, right? The, the Balenciagas and all that stuff. I think yeah. style is like whatever you like. So like you, if you like what you got on, you got style, right? You got style to yourself. So for me personally, like I always feel like I was, I dressed different than everybody else. Um, I had my own style. I really didn't follow the wave. Like, I didn't have drip. I didn't wear whatever I seen people on Instagram or Twitter wear. I just tried to, you know, find what I like and really like perfect that. So I think, you know, some point down the line, I would definitely want to get into some with, with fashion. I love it. I love it. Okay, so best feeling on a football field. The single best feeling one can have on a football field, according to De'Ara King, is what? Scoring a touchdown. Yeah. Scoring a touchdown, <laughs> yeah. baby. Absolutely. Was there one play during your college career? You, you scored a lot of touchdowns. One that maybe stands out to you. You can even pick one at, at one at Houston, one at Miami. Yeah, uh, I would say you no. Know, my one at Houston, probably my, my, my junior year, um, it was fourth and seven. We went for it, and he gave me two plays out the, off the sideline, and I pretty much got to pick which play I wanted to run based on the look I seen. And you know, they showed me something pre-snapped, and then as soon as I stopped the ball, it was the complete opposite of what I thought. So I caught the wrong play, but I kind of like made it work. Um, just ran it like a quarterback ISO and juked a couple of people and scored against USF. It was a pretty good team that year. And then at Miami, um, let's see, Miami, Miami. I probably would say, you know, one of my touchdowns was NC State. Um, I feel like that game, we was, we was on, we was yeah. it. So, one of those touchdowns. Talking with D'Ari King here on 105 through the fans. So, we mentioned the transition to wide receiver. Some teams are looking at you at wide receiver as opposed to quarterback. Is that easier, having that quarterback mentality, kind of knowing when you're playing wide receiver, 
if I fit in, if it's a zone and I kind of fit in here, it's going to be easier on the quarterback. Yep. You already know how to how to read a defense. Is there some advantages making that transition? Yeah, absolutely. I think so. Um, I know my, when I played receiver my freshman year and like a couple games my sophomore year, um, I still was in the quarterback beating room. So I knew what he was looking for. I knew why the coach was calling this certain play. Um, and it's, it's so easy. Like in offseason, I, I used to tell all my receivers to you definitely have to come learn what I know, right? Come learn my progression or what I'm looking for in these routes. That way you're on the field, like you kind of know when, you, when you're, you're clearing out of safety or you kind of know when you're trying to open somebody else up, right? Um, and I think when I play receiver, like I can, I tell my team all the time, I, I knew when I was getting the ball based on the coverage, based on the look, based on the down and distance. Like I knew every time I was getting the ball. Um, so I think it definitely is, is advantages to it. Well, Derek, this has been a real treat for us, man. I uh, can't thank you enough for stopping by, giving us some of your time. Uh, we're wishing you the best, and uh, we look forward to doing this again. Hopefully, you'll have a star on your helmet, and we'll get to do this uh, very frequently. You can make Walchuk look a little bit better. It's embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, no, this seriously, guy. it's embarrassing but myself. It's, it's embarrassing for the show. But we've appreciated <laughs> and it. And calling us a seven is the single greatest compliment we've ever received. Right? <laughs> the highest rating of my life. Absolutely. Yeah. Objective, whatever you like. Whatever you like. <laughs>